The new adventure begins with the death of a character. Viewers petition blood recipes to be released on the internet. Portraits of the past. When the drapes attack. Betrayers among us, but who actually betrayed who? All of this and more in the next episode of After Dice. Shining brand new lights on topics which are nice. Come to After Dice with Paul. Welcome to After Dice, my curious travelers, to our corner of the fantasy world. Here on the couch, we will delve into Vim, the tale of immortality, between episodes 1 and 3. I am your lovable host, Paul Carm, and these are my lovable geeks. We have Yay! Carla here with us, Karina, there, <laughs> hello, and Urs. Hello, it doesn't work. And of course, my friends, we have our vampire English with us. Yes, of course. Don't yes, worry. Yes, yes. Very good love, vampire love. English. Well, let's be honest, curiosities are at a high. So let's start the after talk, everybody. <laughs> after talk. <laughs> What is After Talk? Well, After Talk is our open discussion segment where we talk about the events that took place. Like, um, where should we start? Taking it from the go. Everything started very intense, if I remember correctly, with Lucius's death. How was it for everybody involved? <laughs> Emotional. <laughs> Emotional damage. For me, who I was supposed to roll, it was uh, really stressful <laughs> because <laughs> I'm known for my bad rolls. So, hopefully, I didn't die. Well, you didn't. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we know this already. Yeah. Um, yeah I, also, for me, it was very stressful because, you know, I knew it was a big chance of a <laughs> Lettuce character dying in the first campaign. And I said, okay. Fudge this. Uh, uh, we're gonna risk it and see if it turns out beautifully. And Karina was there, like to monitor each row, and it was beautiful. Like two fails and then two a fails. natural a twenty. Yeah. Oh natural my 20. god! It was like even planning it wouldn't like turn up so it so kept nicely. Us on edge, like with every fail, we were like, oh, we are doomed. We have to start a new campaign from scratch. No, like you, we could have been like. I, I don't want to spoil you, but uh, it could have been like a, a, a thing in the beginning. Yeah. So you had a scenario where Lucius was dead, like you had Definitely. the backup. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, you have a. Lair was no more in this campaign. Yep. So I would have been like, okay, Lair, you can rise up. <laughs> no, <laughs> you have like five minutes uh, of playing. Yeah. Please. Yeah. It's well, more than many, yes. <laughs> no worries, it's a rotative cast, right? So, yeah. who knows? So, uh, going to uh, Lucius's uh, uh, intense start, we have these hardships for the humans in the world of them. How did it impact you guys, or what was the taste that you felt when you saw this reality where humans were oppressed? And for you, how was it for you to integrate it into World of One? Uh, we're talking humans here, right? Yes, humans. Well, uh, <laughs> Disgusting. Humans. I guess, um, yeah, you, Carla, pointed to us uh, that uh, we're living under these conditions. And um, it was actually interesting and a bit of a challenge to uh, put myself in those shoes of being like sort of miserable <laughs> and, uh, you know, living that wretched uh, life existence. that exists, yeah, with which. Um, yeah, there are hardships left and right, and I had to see the world a bit more grim, so to say. Mm. It was, uh, and um, oh, it was. I think it was from the start, the setting. Like you, you know, if you're playing a human, and I had three mm. players who picked this. You know, their life is pretty harsh. It's an unclaimed race by by none of the gods. They live in misery. They're hunted, killed, depressed. Uh, no, and a lot of background we talked about of like the premises and the feelings that comes with it, and yeah. like them trying to embody this. And was a, a wonderful exercise, but mm -hmm. I think it was hard. I liked it. Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome to play a, a wretched human who has no food, who eats bark. It's it's amazing. That's mm. very uh, amazing to be put in yeah. this uh, uh, decision. Oh, your our life is gonna be hard. Sure, I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And my question goes to you guys as well. Would you choose to be human in this world where they are oppressed, or would you have chosen another race? Leave us in the comment to find out. I'm really curious about that. 
Uh, talking about humans, we have Gregory, right? Yeah. We all love Gregory. Gregory. But what Gregory. about Gregory. 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 Gregory? Gregory. Amazing. What about his prison in Greenwall? He, his presence. His presence in Greenwall. I said prison. <laughs> prison I love uh, Gregory so much. <laughs> No, I really do. Uh, the thing is that the thing with Gregory and being him being so loved, I mean, we knew from the background that he's a pillar to the community, but this, like, the reaction to the people came just naturally in yeah. session zero. <laughs> <laughs> was like, oh, yeah. like, everyone, he was doing stuff, everyone was so amazed, and we kept, like, rolling on <laughs> with it and adding more in then session one when we actually filmed it, the first episode mm -hmm. of him. It just, it was there, it was canon. <laughs> yeah, so, well, yeah. And then you guys found it out, found out about it because I had the session zero just with the humans with yeah. the, in, in Greenwell. Uh, and yeah, it was a nice, nice surprise. Amazing. He's really loved. Hopefully, uh, he will be hated by too. some. Me. He shall not speak <laughs> of Not me, but. <laughs> well, uh, we talked about uh, Lucius and his. Uh, um, uh, beautiful upbringing, yes, we talked about Gregory, which we love very much, prison, <coughs> yes. Um, uh, tell us about Hatham's uh, relationships that are represented in the session, like uh, Haria, Halria and Elizabeth. Alright, so, um, well, the thing is, um, how I imagined it, like, um, with Elizabeth, his wife, the relationship went sour, of course, <laughs> but um, how I imagined it is that, uh, especially after the massacre at the hillside village, like that uh, event definitely left um, a lot of us like with traumas, and um, even um, uh, Hebdom. I, I'm not sure I mentioned this, but he had also two sons which died during that uh, massacres, and. Um, I think his wife didn't cope that well with it. She also lost an arm in that uh, oh. incident, and also two of uh, her sons. Uh, and uh, since one then, arm, two sons. Yeah. Since All then, the love for had <laughs> gone. <laughs> that's a series. <laughs> that's a yeah, series. That's a watch. <laughs> so I'm guessing after that, like, definitely something snapped in her. She wasn't quite the same. Mm -hmm. But um, have them still being. Uh, uh, somewhat of a somewhat I'll say this of a wholesome individual he still loved her like he would care for her even without her missing arm she would mm -hmm. do other tasks and whatnot and regarding uh, Halria uh, actually being again uh, uh, his only heir he would have put a lot of trust in her and also share a lot of uh, his teachings and what he saw in the stars and um, everything uh, with her and um, she would have taken a keen interest to this and she would love all of these stories regarding this and um, yeah I guess it's she's the one uh, he would pass on the torch the torch to and how was it for uh, Hebdom uh, the appearance of Martis. How was it for him? Mm. He definitely appeared the first time in a, in a moment of struggle as he was he almost saw death in front of his face during the hillside village massacre but uh, then yeah looking towards the sky he saw the flash and uh, like these powers just uh, the visions of how to overcome his situation appeared before his eyes and um, yeah it was Martis who landed him the power to overcome this and uh, fight through mm -hmm. and uh, since then yeah like his relationship with um, Martis is that um, of course he's uh, not humble the word um, thankful mm -hmm. for uh, his assistance but for him it was like when he saw the astrals it was also like some sort of a um, inspiration and eureka moment that uh, he realized that up there in the astral sea so to say there is a um, another sort of playground of mm -hmm. the astrals and he was more interested to 
seeing what's happening, how this is why he would take uh, notes on how the stars would move and uh, seeing the patterns, trying to uncover, like, what are they doing up there? Mm -hmm. What's happening with them? So he was, yeah, he was interested in Martis per se, but also on the entire shebang. Thing. So for Hebdom, the, these astral beings are quite something. Hmm. And talking about the astral being, right, because we met quite a, a, a bunch of them, like uh, if I remember correctly, we met Martis, yeah. we met uh, Mercurius, Mercury, Mercury. Mercury and, and Lunai. Lunai. And, um, and they... um, several appearances, um, maybe throughout the other episodes, but not so like descriptive, without calling them names. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, they seem to be really. Uh, uh, they have great implications in the events and the way that it turned out. Um, what are your thoughts on them, like? For example, let's take an example of how did you perceive them at the beginning when they came to you? Oh, hey, we have something for you. It's like a gift. Versus now, after things happened because of them. I'm also curious. Are, are you asking <laughs> the us humans the, or the, the people? Yeah, the people <laughs> and or thinking the... <laughs> of, uh, about uh, your characters. Now, how did your character perceive them at the beginning? And now, how has their perception about them Shifted. Shifted yeah. because for me, for example, when they first appeared, it was like, oh, they're so nice and they want to help us. It seems like everybody has their agenda. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Did you see what I did there? Yeah. Let's, Let's all do it. <laughs> their, their agenda. agenda. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, you go first because you're the sure. hebdom. <laughs> you're the, the hebdom. You're the big hebdom. <laughs> well, um,. Also, ever since, uh, like, at first, um, I mean, I think throughout the entire thing, actually, Habdom would uh, keep the same thing, like, um, he would um, recognize their power and uh, their status, so to say, but he also saw them also with a bit, a bit of skepticism. Mm -hmm. But um, as, as he wanted to perceive more, as I say, the grand image, the grand plan, so to say, um, and that was something that he pursued toward throughout the rest of his life. His, um, his things didn't change that much, to be honest. Like, yeah, uh, at first, yeah, he was grateful for Martis's powers, but um, then 20 years after when the campaign started, he was still grateful for his Martis, mm -hmm. but still with, hmm, what are you doing, Martis? Not such a blind faith. Yeah, yeah, but you guys were on the other side, like literally you say hello from the other side, you know, because you're in shenanigans with this astral beings. You left together. I mean, it's obvious you would still feel similar feelings towards them. Hmm. <clears throat> For Lucius, uh, he thought at first that they were the first sign of hope. Uh, okay. Although he was charmed by Martis, Martis okay, didn't actually need to charm him, <laughs> but he was the <laughs> <laughs> he was the uh, not cataclysm the catalyst for his actions in the following sessions. And he may like Martis a little bit too much, <laughs> and the others he doesn't really care about. <laughs> well. Marty's rules, the others, eh, fanboy. who cares? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get you a, a, a shirt. I love Marty. <laughs> a Marty's fanboy. <laughs> I love Marty's. Marty's <laughs> with a heart. Well, of course, he thinks about this now. <laughs> yes, well. <laughs> Emphasis on the now. On the now. 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 In episode three at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um, how was it for you as a DM that planned all of this? Great adventure. Don't you uh, want to know my opinion of I am the going astral... to come to you. I'm okay, going to come okay, to you. Okay, okay. I, I'm making the conversation. Okay, okay. Um, for you to see everything unfolding and having them interact first and seeing how they, I don't know, they not bite the bait, but they go along with the. Um, it wasn't like it wasn't thought of a biting the bait situation. Mm -hmm. I think when what we worked on, I think me and the players with each player individually 
we work on motives mm -hmm. and uh, what the greater goal was the purpose of their life you know as a mm -hmm. character um and then separately i worked on the seven astrals on each of them and i also worked with you <laughs> if you if you remember like in building the campaign each of them has an ulterior motive has uh, um, an agenda each of them want to rise to power but they are all very different you're gonna see uh, and they sort of come together as brothers and sisters and then they sort of matched and you know how they match because I keep couldn't pick I, I made them roll oh, wow. <laughs> so this is what okay. they get wow. I made each and every one roll for um, each contact that they try to make with the astral including for Hebdom, including for um, Lucius, like everyone throughout the campaign, even in session zeros or in session one. And I was like, okay, wow. <laughs> this is happening. Including, I think for Shock, I was in episode two uh, oh, yeah. or one with, with Martis. I made him roll for exactly that. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. And the dice want to tell a story, guys. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, now I'm coming to you. What are uh, Genevieve's opinion of these astral uh, beings that come and have quite molded the events in which you were caught in. Yeah. So Genevieve is a follower of uh, Obscuro's faith, which we all know by now that is the uh, god of matter. So uh, in her faith, it's deeply embedded that uh, creatures such as like astral thingies, mm -hmm. celestial beings, stuff without, you know, uh, body, but that have this you know, uh, uh, cockamamie soul thingy called, uh, it's it's an illusion, it's a trickery. So this was her first instinct. But then she got that enigmatic letter and uh, she had an interest in it. And okay, let's say the story tied uh, together uh, her faith with uh, the human's faith to, to search this, this tomb. Uh, but as stuff happened, as uh, they uh, decided to betray the party, the humans, this new race, decided to betray the party alongside with the astral beings, she was like, uh-uh, girl, you should have known better. <laughs> so, you know, it was yeah. like, my instincts were correct. You should listen to your instincts. Like, right now, she's really pissed. Yeah. I am wondering how yeah. all of this will uh, go into the next sessions because a lot of I'm also wondering. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and saying about it's terrible. Uh, uh, all this, uh, what are your thoughts about the prophecy? Uh, the prophecy. The prophecy. <laughs> which of, which one which... of them? Because they were like three. three. Yeah, they were like three at one point. And she definitely understood the one with the key. So I think this is where it was a bit confusing. There was one prophecy that it wasn't uh, truly um, related as it was written, and only the astros knew it. And bits and pieces were in the sky that have them reinterpreted. Uh, other bits was something that Martis shared with uh, Hepdom and uh, something else that Martis shared just with Lucius, like his initial interpretation of it. But the prophecy, like the whole fully, you don't know it. So, in Genevieve's opinion, she knows of three prophecies <laughs> and she understood only one. So, which one? Oh my God. The one with the key, like obviously she was the key and she was like, this makes sense because the door opened. No, there were like a lot more. <laughs> There were elements, like yeah. elements. Yeah. There was the um... the one with the uh, constellations. Oh, in the one with yeah. the constellations. Yeah. Being guided by them, seeing yeah. where they yeah. lead. And you had uh, the roles, the betrayer, yeah. the king. The who? Oh, do we have any opinions on who is who? Yeah, yeah. I, I do have. Let us hear them so, here. It's like this: from the moment I heard it, Genevieve was the hunter for sure. Mm -hmm. The two ravens, after know. debating for a the brief period was uh, Keith along with Yarek. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were like made together <laughs> in one constellation. Um, I had a hint that Lucius was the betrayer or Shaq. 
Shaq, Shaq was the obvious answer, but mm -hmm. he was like more of a red herring. Everyone was like, oh, it's Shaq for sure. Even Shaq was like, it's me, I'm the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Um, and um, uh, he was the tongue, obviously. Um, <laughs> but who is the king? So Shaq is the king. This, Shaq I didn't figure king. out how, because it's the only one left, you know. Yeah, that's true. And, and uh, Gregory was the builder. Yeah, this oh, was yeah, also the like builder, uh, yeah. on the nose. like. You know, okay. prophecies can be interpreted in many ways and things that have come from past have not yet been told. In my heart of hearts, <laughs> Genevieve is the king, everybody. Uh, so yeah. Genevieve and king, hashtag let's make hashtag it let's happen. make it a thing, guys. <laughs> yeah. Genevieve yeah. is king, not queen, king. Mm. Um, Miss Wizard. <laughs> Miss Wizard. <laughs> um, 2024. <let's> go. <laughs> <laughs> Gender um, bender. Wow. <laughs> um... Let's uh, go to the first fight that you had with uh, Bo Bodolf. Bodolf. And you <laughs> found Bodolf. yourselves in this larger group. How, how was for your characters this process of trusting <laughs> the new group? The trust that was... Uh, okay. Oh my god, I remember I had my bow at the ready because it was this cute dragon uh, fly. fly creature that Carla imitates so well. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, on um, uh, Gregory's shoulder, it was like this huge thing on his shoulder and I didn't know if it would attack humans, like for a nocturnal creature, it was, you know, um, not aggressive, just be minding his own business, but I didn't know if he, he would attack Gregory, so I had my bow at the ready, mm -hmm. just aiming at it, when from the distance I saw Bodolf, chasing this wimpy wimpy half half raven. human half raven creature that we are also a bit um uh let's say uh Unsure. untrusting mm -hmm. of uh and then followed by this weird snake person so i'm like who am i hitting <laughs> i have only one arrow <laughs> yeah and i was like okay let's take out the big guy because he looks mm -hmm. the one who's most menacing but, you know guys yeah. Sorry for the gym bros out there. You're a big guy, you're gonna be targeted. <laughs> <laughs> 2024, I'm getting strong. Um, but why, for me, when, what my curiosity is, is what made your character trust another race? Because for you, it was trusting and allying yourself with humans, which are lesser. And for you, right. humans to ally yourself with. It's not me that said it, it's like the, the boss. Uh, and for the humans to ally themselves with these. Uh, beings that hunt you. Let's just say they were a means to an end. Oh, because oh, maybe that's why I even said as Ulusius to save Yarek, because maybe he was useful, <laughs> or maybe he was useful to gain some trust, some social points. Mm. <laughs> but I don't know. That's my opinion, Ler. Not uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you I ask, ask Lucius, it would be <laughs> another answer. <laughs> I didn't uh, trust uh, them at first. Uh, I mean, Kate seemed nice, like uh, even her seeing that she's compassionate about uh, uh, Yarek and all that, so uh, them was like, okay, she might be okay, but then seeing Shaq, even after the fight ended, I still had my Eldritch Blast at the ready in case Shaq would do anything nasty because, yeah, he's one of the beasts that uh, attacked. A lot of human settlements, and yeah, definitely have them wouldn't uh, have that much of a faith uh, uh, faith in his kind doing good. But then, uh, as the water settled, then Shaq got into an argument with Kate, and I was like, "Okay, <laughs> I'll let them fight. fight off each other if anything." <laughs> yeah. And uh, Genevieve was... Uh, why did Genevieve go with the group? Because of Gregory? No, because I received <laughs> an anonymous letter yes. from my uh, silent... Um, uh, let's partner. Say, owner. No, not partner, because he was the owner of the tavern uh, in which I cooked, in which I was employed as the chief chef, chef, like the cook. Um, I got this weird letter that had me interest because uh, it had um, some information that I was uh, 
yearning for for so much for so much time i was like it was information about my grandparents which my mm -hmm. parents hid from me uh, and i really needed to know that like genevieve's life was complete in her opinion and she had this you know some misunderstanding with her folks especially with her dads uh, about faith about different opinions and this huge missing piece of her lineage which in our faith is um, core and important core and important yeah there's even, the elders. there's even a saying with um, aging is a privilege like the, the the church of enduring believes in longevity and faith and and, 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 and gathering faith for longevity and being blessed with a long and um, prolonged life and ancestry like yeah yeah so um she was like especially if it came from the owner of the tavern mm -hmm. uh it seemed like uh, her job was safe she could go she was encouraged to travel with these humans to find out this you know particular information she was looking for um, you can also share what's the particular information because the folks at home didn't read the letter and also <laughs> so the letter was like um Hey girl, it's me. Uh, do you see? Mr. Fang. <laughs> it's me, Mr. Fang. Uh, the gist of it was, um, I'm also uh, seeing these visions as you are, I think, of uh, Lunai. And they told me that in a day's time, the gate at the uh, uh, Chrono Sanctum, the mm -hmm. tomb of uh, time. time, would be open for you, for your bloodline, at midnight. Mm -hmm. Uh, there, uh, you find you will find hidden information that you you wish to uncover um, about the La Febre family, which is my father's side of the family. So that was the driving uh, yeah. point that and, made the uh, genetic. Yeah, and when I saw that this a group of humans were also uh, intertwined with. Uh, this um, celestial uh, astral beings that included Luna, mm -hmm. uh, the ones that I uh, had visions with, and they were also traveling towards the Chrono Sanctum. I was like, okay, we would be travel partners, but it was also a means to an end. Mm. So, well, yeah. Also, it's very important to um, for the campaign. Uh, Luna, it's not built. It's not doesn't manifest exactly like the others. Her appearance is more opaque. It's more present, like because Luna is actually a, a projection of her astral projection. It's a projection of the moon, which is made of matter, not of the um, spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, mm. I rolled bad the, on the um, uh, perception roll, so I didn't know that. So, <laughs> but, uh, but it's good to know, yeah. Information for you, information for us, information no for everyone. <laughs> yeah. This is why we have the after Um Like, it's it's pretty clear what I'm gonna ask next. Uh, next, next, uh, the <laughs> Chronos Sanctum and the yeah. Tomb of Time. Quite yeah. a place. Quite some events. Oh. It's getting steamy. Oh, yes. <laughs> the cemetery was... The cemetery Chef's yeah. was, was your favorite. So what was the, the, the path that you had to take? So you went from the cemetery, so uh, you went... Below the... the statue, into the sanctuary, and from there to the book of him. Below the statue of yeah, the below. Grim, <coughs> it was the entry to the, the Tomb of Time, which mm -hmm. was a sort of this built-in... Uh, um, let's say a monument, mm -hmm. a f funeral monument. It was a bit um, mausoleum. Mausoleum, yeah. Thank you. And it was a bit crooked. It was the oldest there. It was um, an opening there. Also with the um, with the Sigil. mysterious symbol with the circle with one uneven edge. Um, was a puzzle made also for this uh, loving geeks. <laughs> yes, we, yeah. we have some uh, loving uh, puzzle nerds here. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How was it for you as a DM to create the uh, experience and uh, what, what what was the drive, what was the main idea behind it? Um, so for the, the Tomb of, of Time and the Chrono Sanctum, which is the whole cemetery, what I worked on most was the atmosphere and how to have 
a bit of a hook or an interest point hidden revealed or remaining unhidden uh for each of the characters mm -hmm. and creating you know that pressuring deep atmosphere for for them to get hooked and really transported in that mm -hmm. in that imaginary place and for them to really connect with their character in the, the, the moment it, it was especially um a special bit of design for Genevieve's story with her grandma and uh, revealing uh, her terrible, terrible secret that might have turned her family topsy turvy, you know, <laughs> upside down. Um, yeah, and uh, I had some moments there for, for um, also for the others. Also, in the part of the prophecy that was revealed to you guys, it was it said something about opening the the, the tomb of time by two forces of great strength, or otherwise opening uh, opening it by paying with uh, a branding, which unfortunately <laughs> Gregory paid. We don't know what well, that branding does exactly. We still don't know what <laughs> is that branding about. Yeah. So. Um, hmm. Mm, he's also, searching in the books. It's also mm. interesting that uh, there was another point where a character could have died. Like you were locked in the mausoleum yeah. and uh, your grandma attacked you. Oh, oh that was yeah, terrifying. it was very and, close. And uh, like yeah. you... One yeah. HP. I thought you were gonna die yeah. and yeah. you closed yourself then. Uh, yeah, you closed yourself. I was oh, like, oh why, grandma, are you, you know, damaging me? I'm your niece. I mean, come on, we're... Dementia the, the and stuff, you know, yeah. all the issues. Hunger grandma. Well, uh, <laughs> hunger vampires. I mean, they're locked in there for a reason. And it's not because of their good <laughs> good charity work. <laughs> That's not what some people told me. Uh, the aesthetics were amazing, by the way. So mm -hmm. good job. Um, I mean, thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I don't know how to take this compliment. Thank you. It means a lot. Um, yeah, you, um, I, I really worked and tried to, to build the atmosphere and try to like also connect while we're improvising and going mm -hmm. on and they investigate certain beats and pieces. Music also helps. Yeah. And pacing. What, what I like the most about the cemetery and the whole La Fevre Mausoleum thingy was it? one point after reading the tapestries reading the, you know the scribbles on the pages uh finding the two magical not imbued with magic objects um was the reveal of a person that looked exactly like me because inside the that. inside the yeah. coffin yeah. was a person that looked exactly like me and i was like wait 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 <laughs> Is this Freeze. me yep. back in time? Did I do something like a, uh, do I have like a twin or is it maybe like I went back in time or is it past me, future me? And she was like, Carla was like, but one thing is different. She doesn't have pointy ears. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> oh my goodness. Are they even so made of me. Oh my god, they made a yeah. meme out of me, you know, with the Pikachu. <laughs> me, me like, she <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have pointy yeah. ears, me. <laughs> <laughs> the moment. And also, the... she was gray uh, at, at the base of the hair. Sorry, you got The moment there. you got me with the cemetery, when I was like really invested, besides the fact that it's a cemetery and I'm a weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> was the ever so nice detail of a coffin that's locked with a silver chain. At that moment I was like, okay, we gotta open that. That is a I simple person. It. I'm a really simple <laughs> man, you I show think. me horror, I'm like... Oh, <laughs> you and Shaq as well. <laughs> yeah. um, it was a lot of, yeah, it was a lot of, um, of um, coffins, um, many coffins chained uh, with a with, uh, silver chain and that. <laughs> And, that's and rolling memory. sounds. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Breathing ha sounds like. Yeah. ASMR. Um, <laughs> so. What's ASMR? ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> you know the sounds you I, know, that make you like. Yeah, like ah, satellite. Listen to satellite. Oh, <laughs> Some people need that to relax. Whisper, whisper. Whisper, whisper. Whisper, whisper. Whisper, whisper. Whisper, whisper. Whisper, whisper. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. But guys, we had adventures, we went inside the Chrono Sanctum, we went inside the Tomb of Time, things happened, but at the end, we reached our goal, right? Which was a pretty important a yep. book yep. that somebody 
did something with and all hell broke loose. I am really curious how was it for you Lair as a player and for Lucius to be like I have it now it is the moment and how was it for everyone like swallowing this pill? For me it was the most stressful moment of my life. <laughs> Uh, it was amazing, <laughs> but it was really stressful because, <laughs> you know, I, I had to do certain things and I was like, okay, how to do it without being too obvious? <laughs> how to make them trust you but not be like, mm, I think you're, uh, you're a shitter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's why I came with many stories and discussions of, oh, no, I never eaten soup before. Things like that. Not that he that ate, was he didn't true? eat. No, he didn't eat, but it was oh. uh, a mean to make you... Oh, poor Lucius, oh, I want to hate him too bad. Sympathy yeah, and sympathy. derailing, yeah. yeah. Derailing from the true meaning. And of course, like, things that, you know, the most terrible things <laughs> come from people who are in pain. Yep. Yeah. Like, it was so obvious, like, I would have yeah. thought, like, this person is in so much pain, and he's, like, going to, you know, go willy-nilly, yeah, I have this magic, let's yeah. share it with the cook yeah. who has seven beds in her. And who uh, yeah. sleeps in, uh, sleeps in, in a hot bed. In, in a hot bed, and, Plus, yeah, and all the buckets in the These things and his <laughs> twist were kind of foreshadowed from the first episode and in every discussion. Like, in the first episode, when Martis asked him, hey, what would you do? to make this better and I said everything so or anything anything anything, anything, yeah. anything and everything anything and everything so <laughs> oopsie yeah. poopsie mm -hmm. we know we are uh, we uh, we don't trust Lucius anymore he's yeah. a jackass but how was it for you Hepton to were you are you are you okay with this guys? how are you how do you feel are you going with for, blink are you a jackass <laughs> as well first impression after seeing Lucius go going mad with power, yeah, that definitely made Habdom <laughs> made Habdom be a bit skeptical. This is why I even uh, went to you and casted uh, protection from evil and good. Hope, uh, like in my mind, uh, I thought that you were still charmed by Martis, but you just said now that charmed or not, you would have done the same. Yeah. But um, because Rich. also, like, um, yeah, when you were you when you were in the state, I thought that you were charmed by him. And uh, Hebdom is still like, yeah, uh, Astros have great power, but I don't really want them to, I don't mind control us or just uh, be puppets. Uh, but still, uh, then when uh, Hebdom got the book, he loves knowledge. He loves. Mm -hmm writing, reading, anything that relates to any sort of uh, literacy, so to say. Um, yeah, he got the book, he just opened it and what he saw inside was just mind-blowing. So, mm -hmm. uh, and when he took Martis's arm, he mainly did it, I don't know, like he was on autopilot or something, because he was so deep in the that studies that he just softly heard the calling and like yeah he just instinctively done that because he i think he knew that uh, if he was to refuse then probably so, he wouldn't have so what you're saying is that hebdom paid this price for knowledge yes hmm, for knowledge of magic yes interesting wow guys um disappointed <laughs> Um, How did because, you feel? Because, for example, exactly. let's let's say this. For example, if somehow the book ended up in I don't know Genevieve's hand, he would have definitely went with Genevieve. Okay, oh. so whoever had the book yes. had the power. Oh, so you're a opportunistic asshole. <laughs> well, Lev knows that. Lucius doesn't. Yeah. Um, how was it for you, for me? my dear, to see this for treachery? <laughs> From the humans. Well, what I you said in a way with the gods and. I'm uh, super disappointed in uh, the humans in general. This is why when Gregory, I think in the last episode in episode three, he made a, a plead for us mm -hmm. to go to to, to Green Spring and help Greenwell. Greenwell, yeah. sorry, to Greenwell and save the villagers. And Genevieve was like, 
Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I want to go home first, check on my folks, on my tavern. Maybe we will go and save your village. But she actually didn't plan to, <laughs> to be honest. So it's a good thing that we found Green Spring, Green Wells first, maybe. You yeah. found Green Spring, which oh, is something sorry. else. <laughs> well, we will come oh, back early. to that, but guys, the the I thought the it last... was the same. Oh mm-hmm. my god, yeah. I didn't pay attention. Um, um, yeah. The the um, you have to watch the third episode because the tension was there, like. It was delicious. I was in a corner, as I usually sit in a corner, because people <laughs> tell me to sit in a corner. Um, and I'm fat, don't worry, guys. Um, but the tension was so big, and when when the book was up, and everybody was like, you, and it was so, um, I it was like watching art. And at a certain point, Carla, you were like, Oh my god, this is so intense. You know when the DM has to break the tension and be like, Who this is so intense, guys. You know that the energy was like, I was like, I'm watching a movie. Because it was like, you have betrayal, you have people reacting. Everyone was pissed, but they have motive. It was delicious, so you should definitely, uh, definitely watch that. Um... I even was nervous. Like, yeah, I was, I was so going ner- to ask you how was it for you to like deal with all that energy that was. This like is the there. reason why I rolled initiative, so I didn't want everyone to get skipped, and mm-hmm. I want everybody to like play play a role to um, um um reveal the narrative and to write it together. What's happening? Because it was an intense, important yeah. moment. Uh, we weren't. We didn't want to to fudge it in any way. Um, yeah, so I was very nervous about the outcome. What is happening? What do I have to plan next? Uh, how would the how would the other astrals react? Exactly. How would the how would the green astro react with the hammer? And how would Mercury? Oh it was God. such yeah. heartbreaking. And I, I I I I came back to their agenda when you know Gregory was pleading for Mercury, her mm-hmm. maternal figure, to like aid him. And then she came and said your um, actions will not be forgotten or something along those lines as like Gregory asked for help and received yeah. I'm sorry my child but yes. <laughs> sorry my child the mother is busy but now. Like, that was the, the, the point that was exactly the point where Genevieve was like I have no business in this conflict this is way too many people I'm gonna just go yeah. So. And Genevieve went. Went. Yeah. She went. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> and good she thing flew. she went because what came out of that water that I we don't even know what it is yet, guys. I have some Grapes. theories. If you what are you? Oh, shut up, Paul. You know Grapes. exactly what it is. Grapes coming is out it? and attacking you. And it was very interesting because at a certain point, Gregory <laughs> asked what its intentions are, and it said. I am going, and I quote, I am going to bring death to the world as you know it. So, Lucius, uh, you might be the reason why everybody's like, no. I just found out something, maybe. <laughs> so. yeah, don't hurt me. <laughs> I'm maybe not Lucius, don't I'm Lair. <laughs> don't hurt me. No, no, no Lair. <laughs> and that was a tension moment as well as you were running trying to get out and then you found sanctum in um, um, Paolo's someone's Kamaka. exact in Paolo's uh, Kamaka's uh, place right yeah such a nice guy I was like at, at one point I know that you're gonna be part of the rotative cast and when Carla said <laughs> Paolo's Kamaka I was like oh my <laughs> And, I know, changed my mind. And Paul was also yeah. present in the room. <laughs> present on the on the set, and I was eye cornered, you know, like checking mm. out Paul. Is, is he moving? Like, me? Please describe me how Paulo's Kamaka looks. Me looking at Paul. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, uh, yeah. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> Sorry. How was uh, how was for um, uh, Genevieve? Because it was one of the one conversation that put her faith into question with Paolo's uh, Paolo's uh, way of thinking, because he was the one that yeah. changed them. It was like yeah. you standing face in face with the killer of your race, you know. No, not of my race, of my grandma's of your race. Grandma, was yeah, uh, because I pieced together the pieces of the puzzle, uh, finding the the scribbles in which uh, Paolo Kamaka uh, left a uh, note that he imprisoned my grandmother along with all the other vampires and he had 
to answer some questions because you uh, are forbidden basically because you you also follow the obscuro's faith the the god of matter you are forbidden from killing you're forbidden from touching uh, obscuro's creatures because vampires are also create uh, creations of obscuro so she needed some answers and her faith uh drive her to to get into a tiny conflict with with this person let's say to to figure out who has you know the answer and who, who does the obscurus deeds i would underline two things here um so the church of enduring your faith that you're yeah. talking about the faith that now is prime and and obscurus let's say um um well-being that's feeding obscure right now and has a lot of followers came after a reform like they were some dark features including the beast they're mm -hmm. still following the old ways uh vampires the giants and then then came this new reform and in order for them to stop the killing and worship matter and this is also what paolo did they yeah. tried to protect the mm -hmm. body but without allowing it to make to to harm other creatures so he imprisoned everyone yeah, so this is where faith comes into conflict because yeah. they're following the same faith, but they have different opinions. Each of the, op the opinions is a bit subjective. You know, Paolo thought he was following Obscuro's um, faith, uh, making way for uh, elves and vampires to, to rule the world, like Carla said, uh, being uh, more civilized, uh, worshipping matter without harming, without killing. And Genevieve just could not comprehend how you're a god, you make a creation, you know, you create as vampires, your children, and then you ban them. You like, okay, I made something better, let's uh, put them to rest, mm -hmm. uh, let's forget about them, lock them up and throw away the key. So it was a bit of a inner snap, let's mm -hmm. say. Um, it was hard. It, it was hard uh, and it's a um, you know it's a key moment that uh, Genevieve is building on you know it's like mm -hmm. a it's a doubt right now in her soul and mind that will uh, wow. grow let's say character development yeah. right we don't know where she is going to go but uh, what I do know and you know if you watch the ending of uh, episode 3 um, uh, you got out of the tomb, yes, and uh, you uh, something was different. Uh, the stars were very strange, and then you found the statue. Am I yeah. remembering correctly? Yeah, yeah. Could you please remind me who who, who was in that statue? Uh, we found the statue of Lucius outside the huge uh, settlement, the huge fortress. Walls. was immense with walls Crazy. and a river splitting the fortress. It was like Lucius, you know, the savior of uh, Greenspring or some weird bullshit. And it was like, I think Shaq wanted to hit it or something. <laughs> you tried to hit you it. Tried like, to no, hit I, I tried to hit it, but something, I don't remember, something wanted to do something more nasty to it. but. But there was a guard. Yeah, it was yeah. a guard over I there, and then I just passed by. Lair was also in the room, and like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was I was exposing behind the camera. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. <laughs> I got a statue. <laughs> what did you get? Yeah, I'm amazing. <laughs> Uh, I'm yeah. still slim and I have the <laughs> so same bulka. So. So yeah. Oh my god, maybe this is why he's the king. Maybe he's, maybe the, he's king. the king in the constellation. New theory is born. Or is the emperor or some weird shit. Is he the king? Will he get a new haircut? Will the revenge come? He didn't from get our a new friends? haircut. This he is, didn't get. This yeah, is the real This is, this is so bad, maybe. Gene. Yeah, guys, yeah. all this and more in the next episode um, that will air uh, next uh, Sunday. Next Sunday at uh, 5 p.m. UTC. Five. But PM. And uh, PM. you're gonna start seeing you the rotating are... cast. <laughs> We're gonna start seeing the rotating Maybe. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Who will it be? We it, don't know. Will Lucius will be an emperor? Because you mentioned something of a green kingdom. Is he an emperor? Are you the emperor? 
Would you like to be an emperor? <laughs> Did you like I a kingdom, sir? Would you like a kingdom, hmm. sir? Uh-huh. I, I would majesty. like a statue in my name, but well. not, but only of my name, not myself. <laughs> you would probably the, be the first king with the bow cut. Um, <laughs> I think that uh, it's time to hop on and let the dice fall. <gasps> oh, wow. where? 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 Mm. What is letting the dice fall? Well, uh, letting the dice fall is our new segment where we uh, deep dive into player specific uh, questions and emotions wow. how did you feel what emotions were stirred what mm. fears were unlocked mm. or at least uh, that's what uh, i will try to do with the questions that i have oh no but no. because we <laughs> are the anti players and we like to roll dice each one of you have questions prepared and you will answer the question that is correlated with the number on the dice that you will roll. Oh. Mm. oh. So yeah. each of you will take a d6. Time to roll. Rolling, Jesus. baby. I just have four. Yeah. I have I one. Have I have one. All right, guys, you have the d6s in the back. In the d6s <laughs> in the back. And because I am the host, and I have invulnerability because I made this host. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, I will choose uh, our DM to roll and Whoa. see what question I will ask from my. Do we have a dice tray? Yes. Yep. Oh, okay. You guys are prepared. I don't know also wow. what my notes are. Here is the six. Oh, of we course. have question six. six. Question four. six for our DM Carla. Also Ooh. known as the dragon. Oh. oh. El dragon. Would you have? <laughs> I really <laughs> like dragon guys. Like, I, I love them. El Balauro. And the Balauro. Um, would you have a hint for our detective watchers out there about hidden lore or Easter eggs that you planted in the last three episodes? Oh, okay. I planted. I started planting Easter eggs in my one shots. If you, <laughs> if you like, watch will be wishing well. That's linked. It's in the same universe. And what I can say, being folklore inspired, you a folklore inspired setting, a lot of um, let's say Easter eggs and. Um, happenings that might be unleashed uh, are within symbolistic items and one core I will say this one core um, item that I like to play with in general is water so be aware of that um, in general um, I have like s- different plants, I have different uh, objects, I have different animals I have color, I like, I like symbolistics wow. with colors and trying to like depict this and if you if you watch some some characters from will be or things from will be might interlock with this campaign my detectives out there i am calling for you leave in the questions below if you think you found an easter egg or something and let's get to making a plan because this dm has some uh, hidden plans under her hood we shall solve it. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Who would you like to be next? Uh, I will go for Ler because he's being jumpy. Ler is mm. being jumpy. Jumpy. One. <laughs> one. It's, it's I'm a, not kidding. It's yeah, so that's a one. It's like I roll so good in general. <laughs> Somebody has and to roll bad. It's yeah. the balance of the yeah. universe of the dice. I I'm the balance. <laughs> I, am I the remember uh, Lair had a scene with Whisper with massaging, and yeah. he has like all the advantages, including like plus two uh, uh, performance and yeah. stuff. And he rolled so 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 bad, and Whisper has minus two, but she rolled oh a natural God. twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Massaging, like, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, but in yeah. general, you roll like so bad. Man. Yeah, but my. She, she rolled but the stories I make with these dice, oh, these yeah. results. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you know, like, actually, yeah. you know the commercial we have with Rolling Hills Craft? Yes, I do. That. Yeah. So in that commercial, it's a natural oh, yeah. 20 rolled on camera. So we were prepping <laughs> oh, my to God. film this. This uh, set, you know, with the, the, the scene, with the dice, and we were like, how many tries it will take? You know, we just roll until we get nat 20. And Carla was like, I will do it. And she rolled, and she rolled the nat 20 from the first hand. It was like, yeah. 
Scene done. We <laughs> just started, started the five camera seconds. on it. She rolled. I didn't, Bam, I got it. I didn't even no. intend it. I like. I, I was trying to see. I, we started raking. Yeah. You were trying before. I was trying to see if the light is hitting properly. <laughs> it's like, oh, we, okay. keep the, uh, we keep uh, this. <laughs> it's good we're not living in uh, older times because you would have been branded a witch. Yeah. Yes. Well, we know what we do with dragon. witches. <laughs> dragon. No. Witch. A dragon witch. Uh, well, uh, here, uh, Mr. Lucius, I see here that the question for you is as follows. Uh, how was it? <laughs> how uh, how was it for you to burden? And you've answered this a little bit. Um, this secret of your character. And how long have you known that you were uh, a liar? So, uh, <laughs> I knew what I needed to do way before <laughs> even uh -huh. session zero uh, and it was chaotic it was the most stressful <laughs> of my life because uh, I had a conversation with Carla and she said hey I need you to do this can you do this yeah okay if you do this the eyes will be on you <laughs> and I was like oh fuck <laughs> and the, the conversation in doing this, I said, I, I need someone to play yeah. like a double agent. Yeah. <laughs> I need someone with a motive and for, for them to, to keep magic. Yeah. And I need you to be, uh, what, were, what were the words? I need you to be lovable and trustworthy. But when the time comes, I want you to be an asshole. <laughs> and to, a bastard. A bastard. And to tell them, okay, I got what I need. Bye bye, bitches. And so. do you regret... The decision of saying yes. <laughs> Not even a moment. Oh, no. I tried, guys. <laughs> no. Attention whore. I know. I'm an attention whore. Well. <laughs> <A whore. laughs> Lucius, please choose. Uh, yeah, I because I already uh, gave him the trick. Well, let's see. What let's does see. the guys decide? Two. Two. Better than one. <laughs> How is your connection to the Hebdomads? <laughs> And especially with Martis, how would you describe? It? Well, I guess I think you answered a little bit. Hebdomads ha aren't yet a thing. I mean, depending if we're referring to the finale oh God, of yes. the episode yeah. three. Yeah. But anyway, uh, I'll Can answer we... with the. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Martis. Yeah. Someone yeah. So, who knows the. <laughs> Okay, the 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 What's a hebdomad? So doesn't matter. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Easter egg. Technical, Technical difficulties. Cut. So. Another question. Um, I'm confused. Roll again. So roll again. Roll again. Five. Question five for hebdom. <laughs> what are hebdomads? <laughs> Cut again. Cut. So we're not cutting, guys. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, what was the inspiration for uh, hebdom? And what uh, oh. was your inspiration <laughs> for making it? <laughs> Shut up! No. <laughs> uh, we're Push. losing Paul. <laughs> um, inspiration for him. Well, basically, I wanted to play the, um, you know, the archetype of uh, wise old man. <laughs> <laughs> wise old man, wise old man. And uh, the first thing that popped into my mind was, of course, the De Deckard Kane from uh, Diablo. Okay. Oh. Um, <laughs> but uh, I see it. I have uh, some interesting things now to tell you. Sense. Yes, yes. If you stay a while. But um. Yeah, then uh, I definitely changed it a little bit to fit the setting, so... So I, he was starving. Uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> the starving. And, and, was uh, in love. and the wife. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah, all of those things. Um, but what I can say is that um, I think that's what... Um, so. Let's say it's different than Decker Kane is that his uh, his fascination with the um, stars and the astrals and um, to also answer a bit of Martis um, then um, actually at session zero I was quite uh, intrigued when um, Carla told me that my powers come from the red star and then uh, actually at session zero is when uh, Martis uh, sure. uh, showed himself well. Minus one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but when he showed himself, well, um, 
and I, I, I had the chance to speak with him, mm -hmm. so to say. And um, from there, like I kind of developed a bit um, him around that, the relationship with him. And um, yeah, the inspiration was mainly the wise old man, who sometimes can be seen as a, a foolish one. Mm -hmm. But he's wise beyond his e. Yeah. Beyond his, his ears. ears. Um, so I will pass now the tray. We will pass the tray and it? we will have another round of questions, but we will answer a little bit quicker. So we are in four. 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 Let's see. We Above have average. Your name four. Well, it's fine. <laughs> This is a good question for you. Yeah. What is your opinion about Shaq and his love for animal oh and uh, indulges in a killing? Uh... <laughs> oh. So, I don't get Shaq at all. We don't uh, get Shaq at all. <laughs> because it's like this. So, in our faith, uh, enduring the, ch uh, the, church, the church of enduring, we do not kill. So, we don't, do not eat. Uh, humanoids blood but as dampiers we are weakened if we do not eat animal blood at least you mm -hmm. can see that uh, scattered uh, throughout Genevieve's uh, backstory with her father so uh, the taverns famous because it cooks with animal blood and you get extra powers from it at least you're not frail and stuff like that so at the moment when we were <laughs> setting camp and uh, keeping an eye over the other, keeping watch, we saw a rooster. And Genevieve's, uh, I swear to God, uh, favorite dish is Kok Osang, which is bloodied rooster, which is this rooster infused with blood. So, uh, I saw this rooster, I was like, ma, wow. Uh, oh my god, Carla made this especially for me so I can cook, everyone can eat and I was like trying to hunt the rooster and in that moment we fucking discovered that Shaq the one who eats humanoids like raw with nah, 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 you know like eating hands and shit you know he was like, oh no, I love animals. Please don't do it. And everyone was looking for the fucking rooster. And I was like, no, this is not happening to me. You know, like, okay, you, you're you a vegetarian. I approve, you know, whatever you, but you eat humanoids. You eat humans and you do not eat animals. That's just, that's just weird for me. You, you know, know what I would call that? What? I would call you cock blood. Yeah. yeah, I was so cock block. You have no yeah, idea. Shaq was a cock block. Amazing. Yeah, <laughs> you were the cock block. And um, shall we go for another yes, quick round of the questions? Three, three, four, Carla. So, oh, what was the hardest thing to do in the session so far? I don't know. Like sometimes when I get nervous. Like I, I have like this overwhelming emotion coming from scenes with the players. Like I'm sitting in the atmosphere, they're interacting um, with with the environment, with, with what we're in war with an NPC, and I sort of have like this overwhelming feeling that I'm connecting to something bigger. And then when I watch them like making narrow decisions that I know they're deadly, like I, they have deadly traps everywhere. Like um, for example, in the first session. Shock and Kate, both of them jumping inside the waterfall, uh, inside the under um, under uh, the tunnels from mm -hmm. underneath the cave, like meters into yeah. into the water, like, and it was a, a a long swim. So if they couldn't succeed the Constitution saving throw, and they were almost dead, uh, they both succeeded. But I I sort of like my heart <laughs> skipped a bit. And then again with some things, with some omens inside the inside the, the tomb of time, and the, then Jen locking herself in with the grandmother slashing and one hit point remaining, Lucius rolling. It's like <laughs> seeing them like going as close to death and making decisions that are maybe questionable. It's uh, it's 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 the hardest thing for me. Definitely. And also keeping the story in yeah. line, like not okay, you didn't do that. <laughs> Let's imagine. <laughs> Let's imagine you're on a meadow. <laughs> 
Like yeah. for, um, for a player, there's like um, uh, innocence is bliss, you know, because you don't know what's on the other side. But as a DM, you see, oh my God, don't, uh, you're so close. Uh, no, yeah. it's fine. It, it's, it's harder for me. I make a test. Like, I'm a lawfully good DM. I don't know. It's a, it's a neutral good. It's a test online. Mm-hmm. And this means you're always doing stuff around your players and trying mm-hmm. to. I'm also trying to respect the narrative, but this is a different side. But I'm trying to like root for the players mm-hmm. always, like mm-hmm. have have this and have for them the best experience, even though yeah. that comes with ups and downs and going through stuff that might be an emotional roller coaster. But I'm rooting for them, and me seeing how this can go haywire is like <laughs> the most stressful. Um, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> Lulu, free. <laughs> That's three. Okay. It's okay. better than a one. We're all the same, Question buddy. number three. Yes. Very simple and from the heart. This will be very hard. How <laughs> dare you betray Gregory? <laughs> How uh, could you betray Gregory? Betraying Gregory was the hardest thing Lucius had to do, but mm. it needed to be done. I even had it here from session zero. I wrote a few words about Gregory, which I will not utter here, but it is... Uh, 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 this whole uh, segment, if you can see, <laughs> but I don't think you can see, is about me uh, saying, Eh, hey, Gregory is not a good leader, you need to break some eggs to make an omelette. Uh, it is what it is. Oh my. Yeah. Oh. So I knew <laughs> from that moment that, eh. Okay, well, really he's coming simple. for ya. Yeah, I, I know, I know. You. I'm ready. Alright. No, f- it was five, it's yeah. a re-roll. Yeah? Yeah. It's a two, but I rerolled that as well. It was the yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> three, three, three. Everyone has three. I have to roll three guys. Well. Uh, no what, pressure. Um, how would you uh, describe your connection with your children before their death? How was it for you to have a character that had children and then? <laughs> okay. Well, um, have them. Really does love his uh, children, and um, while he was in Hillside Village, well, life was still hard. He was doing all he could. He w- he really was uh, into. He was sort of the scholarly type, so he would always stay with them, trying to teach them stuff, how to write, how to rap. So he would um, uh, be a bit, so to say, on the motherly side, <laughs> uh, while uh, probably. Um, Elizabeth would be the one tending gardens or doing the more physical stuff. <laughs> but uh, I mean, uh, Hebdom would help in that regard as well. But he, he really did love his ch- ch- children. And um, I think that after um, the massacre at Hillside Village where his uh, sons would die, he did lose uh, some... Uh, some part of himself and to be honest i had something also prepared for lucius i didn't know that you would turn like a mad scientist whatever uh, i didn't know what just came out. <laughs> yeah but uh, at some point i actually intended to tell lucius that um, like seeing him being kind passionate soul or at least it seemed like like actually it uh, it and why he was at first like when we met he was like straightforward trustworthy and he invited you into his house and all that it's because uh, lucius actually reminded him of uh, how he how his kids would have turned up if they had the chance to grow up look at how what they would have though yeah. <laughs> yeah then the twist happened and i was like no that's not no, my kid no, that's, not, <laughs> no. that's not my boy that's a bad, <laughs> bad boy yeah bad egg. So, so, yeah. so you decided this while Lair was starting to scream, right? <laughs> I didn't scream actually. I mean just a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Although the MO was please don't scream. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No. Uh, are, and uh, uh, roll. what are you doing with those? What are those you will find? I'm out gonna in roll something. Segment. You have it's to a roll free. something. It's a two. Uh, uh, it's a two. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. What is Genevieve's relationship to the God Obscure and how hard it is and how hard it is for her to walk this thin line now because as you said before what you thought and what is actually happening is like 
Well, I think Genevieve's uh, walking a thin line uh, from seven years now because um, the Church of Enduring has some very straight lines. You know, do not kill, do not uh, eat uh, meat, especially in the settlement in Valbois. Most of the people are fanatics, are very faithful, and as part of their diet, they don't eat meat of any kind. They're vegan, mm -hmm. so not even vegetarian. So, um, especially her father, that is also uh, very frail and somehow is uh, clashing with Genevieve's conviction because mm -hmm. Genevieve is super curious. She tasted animal blood. She got very fond of it, she liked the taste, uh, she felt its vigor, and she started experimenting ever since she got hired at this establishment. Mm -hmm. So her cooking with um, real animal blood and making it the um, center of attention, the, you know, the, the piece that is actually displayed on the dishes, made this tavern very famous, her cooking. Uh, because it helped the Dampire community within this Valbois village. Mm -hmm. So, she's walking already a thin line, bending the rules, putting something on display that is considered icky or at least is frowned upon by her father and the people who are more eccentric in their faith. Mm -hmm. uh, but so far she didn't kill. She is... Uh, flabbergasted by this um, thing with her grandmother where she figured out that her father allowed the imprisonment of her own mother mm -hmm. and she he didn't do anything he tried to hit this secret from Genevieve so right now she's confused and she's trying to um, manage this uh, faith of hers. She didn't lose faith, but she's doing her doing it by her own rules, let's mm -hmm. say. So she, she's still keeping the faith, yeah. but still bending it towards her. No, well, just a quick question we have to answer with yes yeah. or no. Yeah. Did ever a thought cross in Genevieve's mind to leave the faith of Obscura? Never. No. She's a keeper, guys. She is a keeper, then. Everybody uh, answered the two questions. Everybody's happy. Me is happy. Are you guys happy? Well, I have a question. question. Do you have a question? Yes. What's the thing behind you? What is the thing behind me? Oh. What oh. the thing? Yes. What's that? What's that? Behind me? What's that? <laughs> well, if you would look at that, it is uh, a piece of art that I found out at an auction. Actually, <laughs> I bought it at an auction. <laughs> It says that it's the picture of a famous um, young prodigy uh, culinarian. <laughs> Hmm. Very nice. So it's actually the <laughs> it's an artwork that we received. Uh, oh yes. Received uh, and it depicts a moment I think in session one yeah. when um, it, it was a random moment when I uh, with Lucius I think saw it. So it, yeah, so Lucius was saw and obviously the DM needs to describe the room. <laughs> he, he's entering various rooms. Lucius saw one of the the pictures hanging on the wall with Genevieve being little and winning a prize for culinary skills at a very young age and smiling for very cold smash. Yeah, and smiling cool, very little fan. And, and also smiling very truthfully, yeah. like it's it's here. Yeah. yeah. Very. And nice. someone made it look like Karina, which is <laughs> creepy. Um, <laughs> honestly, uh, for me, even how creepy it looks. Um, um, but the idea of the community and seeing the impact and the fact that people create and make art of this is crazy for me. Uh, if you will have any other art or would like to uh, imbo uh, in, um, how do you say make enrich, it, enrich our world with your visions, uh, we will have a method for you to send us art or um, on the things Discord. that you create on the Discord. Yeah, you can check the in the link below. Um, you can check the link in Discord. Join like the community, send artwork, <laughs> ask questions. We're there. We're also like chatting, making memes. All the time, like we the one with the Pikachu. A beautiful community here. Yeah. Because yeah, D&D yeah, yeah. brings people together and makes <gasps> things fun. You know who wants to make things fun? 
Paul does. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I um, knew it. Ah, damn it, he caught me. Uh, we will go to our last segment oh. of today. And it is called The Bag of Games. Oh. 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 For in my satchel I have plenty of games for my beautiful people that come to spend their time with me. Uh, and uh, uh, since setting. a beautiful <laughs> setting created by <laughs> beautiful <laughs> people <laughs> Dysylvania cast. Uh, Magical. Let's be Magical. honest, uh, the theme of uh, the past episodes is uh, uh, betrayal and intrigue. Oh. So, oh, no. uh, how a player, how do we play a game called True Confessions? Uh, you don't have a choice in the manner. You are going to play the game for you are sitting here and the camera is rolling and you cannot run. <laughs> Um, let me explain to you and to the viewers what is going to happen. Each one of you received before this two envelopes. You can all present your envelopes. You have two envelopes, each mark with one and two. Uh, we were asked to write two sentences on this envelope, one of them being true and another one being false. We do not know which is which and this is where the beauty of the game comes because each of us will be an informant and the others will become the questionnaires oh. and we will have to find out if the sentence that the person reads is the fake one or the real one and we will do this by asking questions like for example if someone says i had a pet when i was little we have 60 seconds to ask okay uh, where did you live uh, did you love animals? Uh, any questions for us to use oh if, the, uh, if the uh, sentence is true or not? Oh no. Uh, I didn't knew this. Do we have to answer truthfully to this question? No, you don't have. You have to make sure that the people believe what you want to believe. Because if the sentence is true, you want the people to say that it is false. So you will lie your teeth out. During right? the 60 seconds. Uh, during the 60 seconds that you are asked. Okay. You have to make us believe the opposite of okay, what okay, the sentence okay, okay, is. Okay, okay. And okay. I have full confidence in Lucius at least <laughs> that he will be able to do that. <laughs> yes? I, I can begin. Uh, let us are. pick a number. Let, uh, oh, will, pick I will pick number. the number. Okay. So I will pick number two. Can you read us the sentence? Please? Yes. I, do I never felt it is good as I felt in this last year. Okay. This is question two, which will go there. <laughs> so we it's have 60 trash. seconds to ask him questions to realize if this is the true one or the false one. Okay. Uh, have you had any uh, crazy achievements this year? Yes, I did. Okay. Which are they? <laughs> hmm. He's stalling! Quickly smack him! Uh, <laughs> okay, the it's like Dice Vena stream. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what are the others? Are you uh, um, are you healthy? <laughs> yes. Okay. What did you do two years before this? Nothing. Okay. Okay. Uh, what did you do? Um, ten uh, more seconds, guys. Uh, sounds truthful. What do you say? Question. <laughs> you have to ask a question. Um, is it? Because your grace achievement, shaving your beard. Yes. Amazing. Uh, well, those were, well, that was the time, guys. Um, what do you think? Uh, is it saying the truth or the lie? I am only saying I'm going towards the truth. I yeah. know yeah. he's saying the truth. Look at his face. I don't know. Can we? Uh, we need to see the envelope before the other one? No, we no, decide no, now. No, no. no you can't. Okay, I think it's. I, I'm also gonna pick truth. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's true. Do you want me to tell you the other one? Yeah, no, 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 no. no. You have to tell us if that was the truth. Yeah, it was yeah. the truth. Oh, it so was the truth, to... guys. Very uh -huh. beautiful. Uh -huh. Yeah. Can I read? Can I read you the lie? Uh, yes, it was the lie. The lie, <coughs> which is again really wholesome, I think. I felt really good backstabbing you as Lucius. Uh -huh. Oh, it was a lie, guys. Uh, it felt horrible. Uh, you're still not forgiven. Well, I know. since we uh, managed to um, 
Discover. <laughs> Discover <laughs> the truth. I have here the vault. Oh, wow. What is the vault, you may ask? Well, the vault is where questions that we have gathered from people that were interested in us or interested about uh, this project have asked us and I have gathered it he all here in this beautiful vault of mine. And if you, our dear viewer that is watching this, have some question that you would like to ask us or curious tips about the project, about the world, about anything, not really anything because we filter some of them, you can uh, go to our Discord and uh, you will find a form there where you can submit your questions as well. But since uh, we managed to find out uh, we were quite insightful, each of us can pick a question from here. And Lair will have to answer it. Oh, oh no! If it was the other way around, Lair would have uh, taken a question from here and we oh. would have to answer it. Okay. I like this, it's very okay. sexy. Let's go. The okay, first very question fast, from very fast. Carla. Very fast. Come on, hit me. Fast, 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 fast. Uh, wait, on this one. Can I, can I read it? Yep. Yes. What would happen if Lair would have died? <laughs> I would have been really depressed. <laughs> I would have risen up from the table. I would started to cry in the back of the I'm studio. I'm assuming, like, I think what He's they would, uh, what do you want to say? Oh. What would happen if Lucius. your character? Oh, Lucius my character. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought, like, uh, if you died, yeah. you would have been depressed because you've been dead. If, but, uh, if Rusius died, I don't know what would happen. Um, I actually don't know. Yeah. Let's go. Next question. Are you from Transylvania? No. Next. No. No. Why? What? <laughs> Why didn't Lucius change his haircut for the statue? Oh my god, I can't believe the question. <laughs> Why is because it, it's, because it's stylish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Look, I actually got this it, one. It goes crazy. nice with the Bosun figure. Oh, okay, nice. and oh my, my question is... Is Paul related to Carla and Karina? Maybe! You will never know. Watch more episodes know. of the After Dice if you want to the, find But isn't that thing like we need to answer? Yeah, like someone uh, will be yeah. Yes, they are related. Exactly. Well, this is how this the game is goes, a lie, you guys. I, I answered it, so... Yes, that's yeah. true, he answered oh, okay, it. Fine. So, yeah, they are. It's yes, gonna be yeah. very confusing Next, for the viewers. Next, I will name Karina. No worries. Choose yours. your number. Uh, no. One. Which one? No, uh, no, two. Uh, one. I, I have to pick one. one. I, 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 you have, have, I, you have. I have to pick one because I'm the most. But didn't you say that everyone reads two? No, you no, just no, no, read, no, no. Just read no. one. Oh, okay, fine. So you uh, will pick number one. No. <laughs> because I said. I wanted the other one. Oh my god. Way more juicy. Oh my god, so much. <clears throat> to prep my other character's voice from the last campaign. I'd spent two, three hours watching Lord of the Rings and just making Smeagol noises. That's true. <laughs> okay, uh, let's say we have 60 seconds. Um, uh, what was uh, for, uh, Gorm's first uh, 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 quote? Um, what, how um, did, did you have any breathing problems afterwards? Never, but I have a bit of phlegm. <laughs> Are you a fan of the Lord of the Rings? Why well, do you presume that? Well, isn't it obvious? What's the scene where Gollum first appears? At the end of the first episode? First episode, first... Uh, first movie. <laughs> uh, there, have you found it hard to uh, stop doing the voice after you did the voice uh, so much? Obvious, obvious. It's true. Okay, there we have it. What it's do you think? I think it's fake. I, I think, think it's, it's true. Fake, 100%. I know it's you true. You think it's true. It's true. And we think it's fake. Yeah. Shall I roll the dice? If it's under yeah. 10, we say that it's well, fake. Well, no, I can tell you. No, you don't. You you don't. don't. We have to see if we manage to, because it depends ah, on the question. Ah, we need to add to it. Uh, yeah. Can we make arguments? Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. I remember talking to you about your character before I knew that I was part of Dice Vene, and I remember maybe, or is this a Mandela effect that you said, hey, I'm watching Lord of the Rings to do Golden's voice. Yeah, but this was before doing the first character. I know, yeah, but I remember. CP. Yeah, I know. I remember before doing CP. But I think she pressed. I know she did this voice very easily before doing CP. So it was part of CP, but when she practiced for CP, she practiced with a bit of zhuzh and other stuff. We both practiced. I practiced for whisper, she practiced for But didn't we practice 
in uh, the voice of Draven, the voice of Whisper and the voice of yeah, Gollum. We... <laughs> Gollum. <laughs> she, never, she never prepared the voice of Gollum. This is why I'm telling you, she prepared ah, the voice yeah. of Sipi. Hmm. I would say yes because you would have told me uh, when we were preparing for the character. I think I remember you saying. Would have told that. him that you would be a liar. You wouldn't keep secrets, would you? Urs is so naive. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> So what are we doing, guys? We have to pick roll. Something. Let's roll. Uh, roll is. I'm gonna uh, roll. Uh, one okay. through no. three are false. Uh, four okay. through six are. Truth. Don't let Carla roll. Go, it's, it's, Carla. A it's a five. Four. Ha ha. So it's, so it's true. true. It's true. Is it yeah. true? Uh, if it... No, it's fake. I'm saying it's fake. No, but he said it's one that one. It's, uh... ah! Sorry. It's so true. It's, you said it is fake? No, it's true. We it's decided true. it's truth. Is it the it's truth or fake. <laughs> It's fake. I knew it! Oh my god. I actually did that, but not uh, to prep my I knew other it. character. I did that before. Well, guys, what did we learn from this experience? Never trust Karina. Definitely. <laughs> trust the twin. Always but, does trust the yeah, twin. Yeah, I mean, exactly. having uh, honestly, the twin that's true. is very yeah, hard to lie, you know. It's very, Sorry, she, Carla. She felt it, like the twin <laughs> we energy. Have it's very hard to lie. There is office. one rule in the universe. is always trust the uh, twin energy and we did it. So. You get to pick one question. question. Sorry, uh, for each of you. Yeah. No, you get to pick three questions and you pick which question you ask all of us you look at all three ah. oh. and you choose a question probably the most embarrassing one uh, to ask <laughs> okay that was a good one the other two you don't have just don't ask them <laughs> oh my god but she they're all very cool she has to pick one yeah. And those that you do not pick, you put them back here. Okay, this. No. Okay, so she picks, yeah, she picks one and uh, asks okay, one, one other. Yeah. All of us. Too much about him, don't. Okay. Much about okay, no, we don't care so much. Oh my god, you really can't. I want to be part of Dysylvania. It's written bad, Dysylvania, without the Y. Are you hiring? <laughs> <laughs> no, all of us can answer this. I don't no, know. We're, we're not hiring momentarily, but. However, we're planning to uh, make um, we're we're planning to make an open uh, contest where you get to meet uh, your idea for characters and uh, motives and stuff. And, and we you get to be an NPC in our Vim campaign. Yeah, that would be That's very cool. Really cool. The twins cut each other. It was nice. Yeah, yeah, they felt the energy. We yeah, we shared the same vibe. Since you lied to us, why do you want to pick another question? Sure. Another one? Oh, yeah. Another one. Another one. And I answer it. I, it's with, can we have the recipes that Karina <laughs> are ma is making? The it little things. Matter. I swear to God, that is this I know one. you can answer it. So can we have the. E yes, but not right now. I need time to prep it. Okay. But uh, soon. Soon, I promise. So we will have a recipe book. It says a recipe. A one recipe. One. It says the one. recipes, but I will start with one and we go. We'll from go from there. Give us yeah. one finger, we take the whole hand. Yeah. We have a dedicated Guys, channel on this are made with food to be and stuff. Uh, broken. If the question is uh, more direct or someone, of course, that person is going to answer to it. We're not stupid over here. Um, you want I'm to know not... my truth? Yes, yeah. what was your truth? It's juicy. <laughs> it's juicy. It'd be juicy, the truth. I ended up dyeing my hair red for the Sylvania web series, even though I never wanted to. Carla didn't want me to look too much like her. <laughs> wow! Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I mean, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. The I knew it. Next, who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Yeah. Who is next? I don't like when people tell us what they think. So oh, you're next. <laughs> I hate it. I'm next. Yeah, Pick one. Next. I don't remember Two. which one. I hope it's not the one where I embed as well. Oh my god, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> and I have to talk about it! Oh no. Okay. You, have, you just have to tell us if it's the truth. It or says right here yet. you like water. <laughs> no. What? Uh, what? To to truly understand the character or an NPC, I first imagined then sexual life. An or, se or sexuality. Okay, that would be okay. awesome mm, if, it, if, it were, if it were true. I know um, it's a lie already. I mean, yeah. Why do you know it's a lie? Because yeah. I know. Um, what's Whisper sexual life? Um, <laughs> I, I, I read it wrong because I'm dyslexic. It's their, uh, their, sexu their sexuality. But Whisper is it's uh, non-binary first. I thought of um, them like this. 
uh, and then I imagine as the, they developed, they didn't have se- sexual intercourse, but I imagine as they developed, <laughs> they would make parts. <laughs> <clears throat> What's Yarek's sexuality? <laughs> uh, obviously, he's. Uh, I think he's. Into case. He's into Kate a, 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 a lot. He he's a he's a teen. They grew up together, and they have like obviously not the same energy. But the attic feels a strong connection. Kate She's sees. Using the to sees yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Sense. I know. Sense. I know. But no, it's important. Like Kate sees uh, him as he, her best friend, and obviously it's yeah. a bit of like you know yeah. dynamic crash right there. Friend zone. Okay. What You're is our yeah. opinion, truth, or lie? Lie. Lie. It's a lie. Lie. Am I the only one? Is that true? Yeah, she kind of made it up as she went. So. Yeah. Is it a truth or a lie? Is it a truth or a lie? No. I smell the lie. So yeah, everybody. The consensus is on the yeah, lie. It's a lie. Oh, oh, with the opinion. Of so the unfortunately, answer. it's the truth. And I just <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! And the other one was like, I really like more being a player than a DM. <laughs> Oh my god. Do so you like being a DM more than a player? Uh, I, I think it depends trust. on the year, but in this year, yes. <laughs> I do not trust the energy anymore. What's yeah. You, uh, oh, you can take a, you take a question. <laughs> I made this fool of myself. That's <laughs> like it's awesome. A, it's important it's for me to think if they have one, if they're not, who they're exactly. attracted to. So I think fast when it mm-hmm. the, the, comes an NPC. I'm sorry. You don't have to push this thing. If it yeah. works, it works. Okay. It's a part of the... So I'm, uh, I'm reading this. And you... Yeah. Oh, you're so, true, Urs, huh? Yes. Why did his wife really hate Hebdom and why didn't you get a divorce? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, um, what did you do, man? <laughs> so, I, did, no, it says. Half of the que- did, did his wife really hate Hebdom and why okay. didn't you get a divorce? Half, half of the question I've answered mm-hmm. is saying that I think uh, the massacre <laughs> really um, ruined, uh, ruined her, her and. Uh, yeah, she's now. She's gone. Yeah, she's, she's gone. gone. <laughs> I don't know. She's Any left with, with a she's big gone. trauma and uh, probably love. She didn't it's find okay. answer in that. But uh, why he didn't get a divorce? Um, uh, were divorces invented in that age? I don't I know. I mean, I think uh, survival is more important. <laughs> that that's exactly, yeah, exactly. If, like, pretty much. Like that's why. If I, they didn't die, there was no divorce. I don't think so. you, you get married even. Do you yeah. have like churches to yeah, get no, married exactly. in? Like, uh, you need a church. It's true. It's true. Yeah. You need uh, that's, the, that's the, the mayor's right. office. Yeah. Ha, ha, do we, have a, we have a mayor. <laughs> oh, we need Gregory's approval. Gregory will, you know, join two of trees together and be like, you're married. Yeah. I'm Gregory. Yeah. Have another question. Okay. Ooh. Uh, so. I get. Mm-hmm. It, you know what? I'm gonna ask Karina. If you could, ch- if you could change a moment in the game so far, what would it be? This game or uh, what game? The game. The let's say them. So let's say them. Killing them. <laughs> Them, them, Cooking them. that roster. What would I change? Oh, yeah. Definitely not Ooh, sticking just... my hand into my grandma's so <laughs> coffin. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, yeah, I don't know if uh, Jen would be interested in the book or she would end up with it. So I don't think that would do much uh, difference. Let's say, fucking humans, you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah, I said. Uh, do you want to pick a number? Yeah, one. Oh, it's for you. Yeah, but so it's I also playing. Well, yeah. nice like Paul for one and one for Paul. Oh. No. Oh. oh, God. I created a D&D character with the sole purpose to cause drama in the group. <laughs> I believe uh, that to be in, so true. true in yeah. Vim or like in another yeah. okay i would say it. yes because i i see you do that i honestly i'm the most and carla knows this i told you i'm the i told you i'm the support kind of guy that wants to support the group and wants to and she can uh, attest to that also. yeah but maybe you said but you know what but why, why carla you play with me D. <laughs> well yeah like do you feel like my no. character but no. I can't believe that you would do that. Did you... What was the name of the campaign in which you did the thing? The name of the campaign, oh my god. Uh, Konya. In Konya you yeah. did that? The original one? Yeah. 
So we you're trying to convince us by your. I'm, I'm feeling that. I'm not trying to convince you anything. I'm telling you to answer. Uh, do you hmm. feel that. How, how much drama did you cause? Like, did the couples break over the table? Did they start crying? Did they. I don't know. Did someone leave because of your character? Uh, I think the highest drama went when I killed someone. And I told the DM that it was somebody else. <laughs> And then the group started fighting each other. But the time is up. But the... Hmm. Wow. This okay. is very confusing. How okay. did you kill someone and without so a DM based, knowing? Based on the lore I know of Konya, I think that's a lie. No, I think it's the truth, but I'm very bamboozled about it. You end. cannot ask me any more questions. What? You have to tell me if it's a truth or a lie. I think it's a truth. I think it's a lie. <laughs> truth, guys. Go with the truth. Paul is sneaky. He wants Ooh. to win the game. I need to win a game. At least. Yeah, I think it's a lie. I'm not sure. No, let I, th I think it's a lie because when asked what was the biggest drama, you had to think for a little bit. Yeah, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Hold up, it's a lie because I don't think that anyone would it's start a, a new fight because you killed the character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a lie. Yeah. I mean, it's not even drama. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's not even. I mean, it's drama, but not, you know, <laughs> drama like. Excuse my language. We are uh, close to them. <laughs> we are siblings. So, so apparently. Like, apparently. We don't know each other. <laughs> yeah, but apparently so, so, like, so it's, the, uh, it's a lie. It's a lie. Is this your final answer? Yeah. Yes. A filthy lie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know the truth? Yeah. yeah. I always buy myself a cake when one of my characters dies. <laughs> uh, how many cakes did you buy yourself well, so far? Uh, six so far. <laughs> I bought one for the iris. So do you? The, can we each get a so question and ask you that yes. question? Yes, of course. Yay! Yes. Yay! Well, it depends if it's for me. Yes, Maybe yes, I'm lucky yes, and yes, you yes, have yes, a question yes, for somebody else. Do you guys play video games? I mean, do you play video games? That's yeah, video. my favorite video game right now is. Uh, actually, I'm replaying The Witcher 3. <laughs> oh, okay. Not bad, not nice, bad. nice, nice. Very good. It's important. Oh, like the, the, the fate of the world depends on it. Do you guys really have vampires in Romania? Yes. Oh, okay. it's Poland. From my uh, point of view, yes, indeed. We have so much sucking. Don't spread misinformation. <laughs> it's a false information, guys. We have or so it? much mm -hmm. sucking. <laughs> <laughs> Romania. <laughs> Blood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is Count Bear called Count Bear? Why do you call him Urs? <laughs> <laughs> I do not know how to answer this question. You have to. <laughs> So his ne real name is Ovidio. Uh, Why do you answer it? <laughs> uh, because I don't know. Honestly, I Would don't know Count it? Bear for so long. You answer it. Ovidio? Okay. Uh, why I'm called Urs? Uh, no, no, no. It's... Is yeah. Count Bear, bear call, called Count, Count bear. bear? Why do you guys call him Urs? So if your name yeah. is Count Bear, what do we call him? Oh, uh, yeah. because Urs, it's like my nickname that I've always had. Um, and It, it means... Bear. <laughs> Welcome Urs to uh, bear. learning Romanian <laughs> with Isilvania. It's bear. just that easy. It's uh, Urs. Yeah, my Urs. spiritual animal and all that. Amazing. And my question for you is, what do you do in your free time? Oh. I go dancing and I write uh, fantasy stories that I play to people. Because hmm. I like gaming as well. Yay! Yay. Very nice. Very Our nice. last contestant is... And uh, his oh, number right. will be number two. Not number number two. Okay. The divorce one was the best so far. <laughs> After finishing DMing season one of Iceras, I'm finally glad to I'm glad to finally be free of the DM curse. I false. false. <laughs> no, I don't uh, even have to answer. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, no question. Yeah. False. false. How yeah. was your experience as a DM in Iceras? Was very, enjoy? very good, and uh, I'm actually interested in uh, seeing the next season as in uh, there are so many adventures that i have in my mind too do you enjoy more being at the mr player well i guess i mean if i answer that maybe it will give away but uh, let's say um i like uh, being a player false 
Ting, 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 red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag, I received some information oh, over the wire. Oh, no, it's the same thing that you're a liar. It's a lie. It's a lie. Okay. Yep, it is a lie. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> he got so red, look at him. Uh, and what was yeah. the truth? Urs has the purest heart, guys. Yeah. Like, if you. Urs think, is think. so trustworthy and pure. Like, he is like he a. And now I'm about to reveal the truth to you, and that opinion will change. Because the truth is, the first time I've ever DM'd, I've killed one of my player's characters. Nice! Wow. I mean, it's the first okay. session. It happens. The first it happens. Session? If you don't balance the arts, the like, it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I almost did it, so. I did it! Yeah. <laughs> not almost. And I mean, it's it not even balanced. I mean, yeah. you yeah. roll death saving throws so, yeah. from the beginning. How is that balanced? And you put so, the one that's mm -hmm. really bad at it. All of us have a question for us. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Oh. What is this? For oh. Again. oh, it's a big oh, one. Let's see. Oh my god. Do you play casual campaigns without recording? Can I join? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I play um, one with uh, Rooks Yonuts and some other friends that um, we play play it online. But I play another campaign which you can join as well. At if you're from Bucharest at Geek Hub, I play Starfinder. Oh, as well. That's nice. nice. I went the last time you played. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Just. Uh, Panic at the disco, almost like yes. shooting and blasting lasers in the on the disco floor. But uh, yeah, Colonel Jorgens. Other questions? Um. Okay, go. <laughs> oh. I was you guys, <laughs> Goosey. <laughs> what? I don't know. I think it's like I I I, I see you guys eat a lot of healthy foods. Yeah. I think that, that this is it, but it does, it's not really. Do, do you always eat carrots and celery? Me no. <laughs> <laughs> Me no, thank you. No, no like meat. meat. Actually, we stopped you eating carrots because yeah. someone complained too it's yeah. too crunchy for the sound. So thank it you was for me. your. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your concern. But we so. eat carrots in our free time. Who makes your art, photos, minis, and videos? You look very professional. Oh, well, thank you. Mm. Who well, art please. is made by. Please help me here. So, <laughs> art, 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 art department. Uh, let me tell you because I'm <laughs> head producer okay. here. Okay. Uh, so the art uh, department is split in several things, but the illustration from this se season from them is made by uh, uh, Ale. 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 She's Ale. an amazing illustrator. It's, it's Alexander Caras. Um, she's an amazing illustrator. Also, the opening credits, uh, which is the video that you you saw, the video with Paul dancing is is made by by Vlad Andronake. Um, the photos from this season is made by Anka, and she's an amazing photographer. She also did the, the teasing videos. Mm -hmm. Uh, part of the, but let's say, uh, visual concept, uh, frames, uh, logos, and all that, I do it. But the miniatures are uh, painted almost, um, most of the time, by Rolling Hillscraft that you know. We have also a promo code, you can watch it. <laughs> uh, it doesn't appear anywhere, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, uh, for the promo code, um, um, Roll for Initiative folks, also helps us with, with uh, some, some paintings. And we did some uh, 3D models with uh, inside miniatures, and uh, sometimes your notes uh, also helps us with uh, yeah. mini painting. Yeah. So it's a it's sort of a group effort. Yeah. And Karina does people, the social yeah. media. Yes, she does. Yeah. Uh, well, so we what can, she said. Yeah, yeah. We can put that description. <laughs> and uh, uh, the other people. part was what part of the question? There was another part. No, of the that question. was that was it. Oh, okay. So there, and, um, and the editor is, is Robert. Let's not yeah. forget the editor. It's it's Robert yeah. Julian from Minecraft. It's yeah. It's it's a it's a whole village, guys. I hope yeah. I didn't forget anyone. It takes a village to yeah. raise this beautiful to raise by very, very yeah. amazing. So guys, we will um, end this off. It's a very important question for all of you. Oh, do you like Paul? Yeah. No, this is not a question. <laughs> oh. Do you like uh, Harry Potter? And if you do, oh. what houses are you? Slytherin, baby! There are you? Are you a Slytherin? Yeah, apparently I'm a Slytherin. Really? Yeah, I did uh, like 10 tests. I, I was uh, two times a uh, Gryffindor, then I was Hufflepuff almost 50% of the time, 
and then I was Slytherin, and then on my last one I was Slytherin, so... Huh. You oh. need to make the extended version of the test. I did, yes. and I was Slytherin. The one with, like, uh, yeah, I was, so many questions. Yeah, I was 70% so Slytherin and 30% Hufflepuff? Yeah. He's a head staller. He's a if, head staller. If, if, if he would have went to Hogwarts, the hat would have been placed, and we'll be, like, waiting to start the yeah. eating. <laughs> <laughs> and I would be like, yes, do not eat without me. <laughs> I, I will kill you. <laughs> Halbada Kadabra. <laughs> So what are the other houses? Uh, so yes, we like Harry Potter. Oh, we yeah, love right. Harry we like Potter. it so much. We're obsessed with it. Yeah. Maybe we're yeah. gonna do a campaign someday. Or, or live, because we also did other campaigns. Any other Harry Potter fans out there? Yeah, Potter. comment. I'm, Potter I'm, I'm, I'm always, curious, I'm always a, a boring Gryffindor. Like, I have those core hey. values like embedded in my heart. Bravery, even though like sometimes I'm scared, but I'm fighting through it. Like I, I love my friends. I would stop, stop doing this. <laughs> I will slap you with the power of the Gryffindors. <laughs> um, Bravery and, and love for my friends and, and protect. What you like the most is getting points. Yeah, yeah points. Yeah. All the points. Yeah, like Dumbledore, give me points. Twenty points to Gryffindor. Uh, but you. why? <laughs> I can say no, that I'm not a very huge fan of Harry Potter. I like it, but that's about it. I like it. What's your house? And, um, what do you Ravenclaw. Think? Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. What's your house? In my house, it's Slytherin. <gasps> oh, no, and not because it goes well with my hair, but uh, it's because uh, I'm actually very ambitious and a bit pride. The cunning shit is not for me, but you know, what can you do? No, you can Although there are synonyms with bravery and other stuff, but uh, there are the bad synonyms. Well, <laughs> you're not ambitious, you are cunning. I Ugh. think it's about what drives uh, you, like, oh, yeah. 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 And what's the you. purpose? I, I watched Harry Potter, I did the quizzes. A lot of the times I got the Hufflepuff. So. <laughs> but uh, uh, in one that case, song? I got Slytherin, so I don't know. You know the song yes. with. Hufflepuff, make better lover. <laughs> it was, this one is so funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, NPC. Guys, thank you so much for uh, coming here with me. Thank you so much, you guys, for coming, all of And uh, watching, here, watching, watching this. Watching yeah. until the end. You are truly the best. If you uh, like us a lot, it will help us to click that yeah. like button, click on the subscribe, uh, make our day, make us smile, tune in for more content on Sunday at 5 p.m. UTC on YouTube Dysylvania, and of course, have a good day, have a good night, and don't let the vampires bite!